This video was produced by Lion Total Care, dedicated to keeping you safer longer. Chapter 1. Advanced Cleaning of Turnouts This video is designed to provide training on the cleaning definition set forth in the 2020 edition of the NFPA 1851 Standard on Selection, Care and Maintenance of Protective Ensembles for Structural Firefighting and Proximity Firefighting. Proper cleaning of turnout gear is essential to the safety and health of firefighters. Smoke deposits and condensed residues can be trapped in the fibers of turnout clothing during fire suppression and overhaul operations. This can result in secondary exposure to cancer-causing chemicals through inhalation or skin absorption. Turnout gear saturated with hydrocarbons tend to absorb heat rather than reflect it, reducing the thermal protection of your PPE. Additionally, gear that is heavily contaminated with hydrocarbons is more likely to conduct electricity. This increases vulnerability when entering an environment where wiring is still live. Materials that are normally flame-resistant can ignite if impregnated with oil, grease, or soot. Chemicals encountered in normal firefighting activities can range from gasoline to pesticides to solvents. In addition to being hazardous, these can degrade gear. There are three levels of cleaning. Preliminary exposure reduction, also known as PER, advanced cleaning, and specialized cleaning. Preliminary exposure reduction replaces basic cleaning. It is to be performed by the end user as soon as possible after exiting the emergency scene and before entering the rehabilitation area. The primary purpose for PER actions is to reduce the exposure of the firefighter to soiling, products of combustion, and persistent contamination during doffing of ensembles and ensemble elements. It also can minimize the spread of contamination to apparatus, vehicles, and the outside environment. Preliminary exposure reduction techniques can be dry, wet, or a combination of both. Regardless of which technique is used, the firefighter should continue wearing his or her SCBA while going through the process. Dry mitigation involves brushing the debris from the exterior of the PPE using a soft bristle brush and starting at the head and working downward. Wet mitigation involves gently rinsing the exterior of the PPE using a low-pressure and low-volume water hose. Never use high-velocity power washers or pressure hoses for wet mitigation. The pressure generated by these tools can severely damage your PPE. Portable decontamination showers can be used where weather, modesty, or other issues may occur. To perform PER, spray at the top of PPE, rinsing downward. A soft bristle brush may be used to gently scrub the PPE. Care should be taken to not soak through the clothing. A small amount of mild detergent to aid in mitigation is also recommended. When detergent is used, it should be followed by gentle and thorough rinsing of PPE. This will reduce the risk of reducing the protective qualities of the PPE, such as THL and flame resistance. Potential runoff of any contaminated rinse water should also be taken into consideration when using wet mitigation techniques. A combination of both dry and wet techniques can be used as well, where large debris is brushed off and followed by wet mitigation techniques. Following preliminary exposure reduction, appropriate cleaning procedures should be followed. Advanced cleanings are done to clean and decontaminate after exposure to products of combustion. Advanced cleaning includes disinfection, sanitization, and biological decontamination. The current edition of the NFPA 1851 standard requires a minimum of two advanced cleanings annually, at least every six months, with one advanced cleaning done at the time of an annual advanced inspection. Specialized cleanings are performed to clean, decontaminate, and sanitize PPE after exposure to bulk chemicals, asbestos, or other biological and infectious materials. Specialized cleanings can be conducted at 140 degrees maximum wash temperature, whereas advanced cleanings are still 105 degrees maximum temperature. Research has shown that the hotter the water temperature, the more effective the cleaning process, for example, hotel linens. However, temperatures above 105 degrees Fahrenheit can degrade some components over time and shorten the useful life of PPE. 
When performing an advanced cleaning, the manufacturer's cleaning instructions must be followed. Instructions are typically found on the garment's label and in documentation provided by the manufacturer. In the absence of manufacturer's instructions, NFPA guidelines should be used. The NFPA 1851 Annex provides guidelines around a washer extractor program for advanced cleaning by trained fire department personnel. A front-load washer extractor with a minimum load capacity of 13.6 kilograms (30 pounds) and a minimum volumetric capacity of 4.0 cubic feet is recommended. It is also recommended to provide an extractor specifically for cleaning PPE. It is important that individuals operating machines ensure the proper detergent is selected and correct water temperatures are set, as well as the g-force of the spinning cycle. Careful adherence to the manufacturer's recommendations of cleaning processes has a significant impact on cleaning thoroughness and maintenance of protection factors, such as THL and fire resistance, as well as extending the life expectancy of the garments. Use commercially available cleaning solutions, such as Station Care, available from Lion Total Care. Any cleaning solution used should have a pH between 6.0 and 10.5. Always read SDS sheets before using cleaning solutions. Always wash turnout gear separately from other items. Never wash your garments at home or at a public laundry facility. If the machine is also used to wash items other than protective ensemble elements, it must be rinsed out by running the machine without a laundry load through a complete cycle with detergent and filled to maximum level with water at a temperature range of 49 to 52 degrees Celsius. Detach outer shells from the inner liners. Remove DRD or suspenders. All closures, including pocket closures, hooks and loops, snaps, zippers, and hooks and Ds should be fastened. Heavily soiled areas should be pre-treated. To pre-treat, pour detergent directly onto the stain covering the soiled area. Do not exceed 2 ounces of detergent. Use a soft bristle brush and work the detergent into the soiled area. Allow the detergent to penetrate for 15 minutes, then launder normally. If soiling still remains after laundering, you may repeat the process one additional time. If you were still not successful, please contact Total Care or a verified ISP. Do not mix outer shells liners and DRDs in the same load. They must be washed separately to avoid redepositing soil from one component to the other. Separate the elements. Make loads containing shells only and liners only. Load the shells or liners following the machine manufacturer's instructions for proper load size. Do not overload. Add detergent according to the manufacturer's instructions. Never use chlorine bleach. Start the wash. After washing, inspect the elements and rewash if necessary. Double rinse. Double rinsing removes residual dirt and ensures detergent removal. If your machine will not automatically double rinse, a complete second rinse cycle should be run without adding detergent. After washing, dry elements by hanging them in a shaded area that receives good cross ventilation. DRDs should be either hand washed with a mild detergent and rinsed thoroughly or placed in a mesh bag for machine washing. Do not mix DRDs with any other turnout element. Suspenders should only be hand washed. Use a mild detergent and a soft bristle brush. Gently scrub the soiled area for one to two minutes and rinse thoroughly. After washing, hang DRDs and suspenders to air dry away from direct or indirect sunlight, fluorescent light, or sharp objects. Make sure there is good cross ventilation. All advanced cleaning must be documented and kept on file by the fire department. For additional information, contact Lion Total Care.